hi everyone and welcome to the latest soul moon tutorial and as always thanks for tuning in and thanks for your support in this one as you can see i've got a sort of really badly sort of smashed fuse holder it's actually peeled the sort of trace up the pad's gone with it as you can see the trace in the pad starting to crack at that join there so what i'm going to do we're going to repair this with copper tape now copper tapes are easily available from the internet so i've not sort of showed this method before so I'm going to take you through step by step how you can sort of resolve situations like this using this tape. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the video, hopefully you sort of see a new method and uh, hopefully it can help you out in the future. So what we do, we get straight and we're cleaning this sort of, sort of situation up and uh, we progress right through to the end. So we do, sort of do the first stage now. Right, so moving on to the first stage of the clean up operation. Now I'll always assess the damage and always sort of take this part step by step. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to get this part of the fuse holder removed because this pad underneath, I'm pretty sure, is still intact to the board. So, what we do, we get this removed, just check this pad and make sure that's fine, and then we'll sort of go from there. So, the first thing I'll do on this, I'm just going to add some rework flux on the end joint. That's really going to aid your solder in to get the flux on there. It's going to enable the solder to flow quicker and sort of get that part of the, uh, the fuse holder off. So I've just added some rework flux, so I'm just going to put a small amount of solder on my iron. I'm going to come in from a different angle, so it might be quite awkward for me, but I just want to make the video quite clear. So I'm doing this with lead, uh, sorry, lead free solder. It's got my iron set to about 370 degrees Celsius. Let's get that removed. What I do now, I'm just going to quickly use solder braid and get that Basically the pad cleaned, all the solder cleaned off that pad. So as always, I'm going to dip my solder braid in some flux. It's going to enable the solder to sort of travel up the sort of solder braid easier. So again, just a small amount on your soldering iron tip. And add the braid in there, hopefully braid all that solder away. Just drag it to the corner. Solders travel nice up that pad, and as you can see, got a nice flat pad. There's no damage at all to that end of the, the connector, the pad, for instance. So, what I do is get to quickly get the flux off that one. Just got a cleaning cloth dipped in ultra solve. This should enable you to see this pad's basically really intact, no damage at all. So, as you can see, this end of the, the fuse holder pad for this end is perfect no damage at all the tracks fine going to the via so that's the first part of the cleanup operation achieved so what we do now we're going to move on to this part and then we sort of go go from there after that right so moving on to the second end of the fuse holder this is a more badly damaged end now obviously this is the one where the pads come off and the trace is lifted up to about this point up here now what I've done just for the sake of the video I've come back about half a millimetre and you can see a, a lightly scored line just across there with a the scalpel. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to scalpel that slightly deeper. So what you want to do is come back onto solid trace, score a line about halfway down and just wiggle it at that point until the trace snaps. Now quite a few people have said to me, right, just bend it back until it snaps, but you'll end up taking this trace further back. The resist down here is going to crack. So the best way to do it, score a line halfway through, just yeah, just so you don't go into the board, wiggle it at that point, it will eventually break. So when you're using scalpels, obviously please be careful, obviously very sharp. So what I do, just push this back down out of the way. Just going to take that score line slightly deeper. And give it a few scores. I'm going to go too deep. And you just, oh, the fuse is falling out. And you just wiggle it at that point now. And it will break off at that point you should get a nice solid point to to work with so it's got that so as you can see got a lovely cut there you've got a perfectly solid bit of trace there to attach the new copper pad and trace that i'm going to make out the copper tape and that will be the next stage like i say where it stops lifting come back about half a millimeter and then you've sort of got solid ground to work with so what we do now, 
we basically move on to the copper tape stage and then we get sort of show you how to cut that out and uh, we'll get it fitted to this and get the fuse holder back on so we'll move on to the copper tape stage now So move on now to the copper tape stage. This is where we're going to replace the pad and missing trace. We're going to make the same shape as what came off the board out of this copper tape. Copper tape's widely available on the internet, easy to get hold of, plenty of places sell it. It's fairly cheap, you can get a reel for a few pounds, probably even less if you get a sort of small quantity. So anyway, what I've done here, as you can see I've got the copper tape on your this on your screen. Now on the back of this tape normally you get a it's normally a DC back to get the paper back in. Now what I've done, all I've done really is measured the missing pad and trace off the board, recreated the same measurements onto the paper backing. All you've got to do then is score around that with a scalpel and a ruler. And you're going to cut that exact shape out and that should fit nicely onto the missing pad and trace on the board. So that's what I'll do now, I'll get this cut out and then uh, we we'll place it on the board to see how it looks. Right, so now we've drawn out this wire, I'm just going to show you how easy this tape is to cut. Now you can use scissors, but I find a sharp scalpel blade does a really good job. It may take a couple of times to go through through the tapes. You've got the adhesive backing and the copper tape. And you actually should have a, as you can see, got a nice straight edge there. I'll just show you the other side, just do the other side while we're there. Just quickly get that placed on the line. You can always shave this shape afterwards if it doesn't quite fit what you need. So I'll normally go a bit further. Like I say, a couple of times through the tape should give you a lovely edge. Just don't think I've got quite that end bit. Let's just go through that end bit again. It's got it this time. So that should peel up nice and straight. As you can see, so if I move the ruler, You've got the two edges nicely cut cut out there. So all I've got to do is trim that front bit and we'll try it on the board and uh, yeah, see how it fits. So what I'll do, I'll quickly finish this off camera and then we'll rejoin you at the stage where we place it on the board. So as you can see, I've finished the shape of the pad and trace out and I've got a pretty good fit actually. Could have done with about maybe a quarter of a millimeter off that back side, but overall I'm quite happy. It butts up nicely to the trace there. So all I've got to do there is move the resist about a millimetre back, get a nice solder bridge over there. So I've also removed the paper backing on this, so this has got the adhesive underneath. But I'm not going to actually use that adhesive, I'm going to take this back off, clean the adhesive off. I'm going to basically put a PCB glue under the pad and trace. I'm going to use one called Tack Pack. It's not ideal when sort of using glue underneath pads. I tend to go round the outside afterwards as well. You've got to be really quick when you're doing your solder joint because the, the glue does sort of uh, go soft for a sh short while and you will get a few fumes off it so yeah, if you've got any extraction that's a good thing so what i'll do i'll get this removed get the adhesive off and then we we'll get this glued down with tack pack and then uh, we'll do the joint there and uh, we'll go from there so i'm also going to glue the fuse holder body down sort of in the middle there so it's going to give that a small aid and i'll also add a sort of layer of tack pack right around the outside the fuse holder so it's going to have quite a bit of strength to this it's good that you've got a solid end still up this end a bit of stability so uh, like i say we get the foil removed get the adhesive off and uh, we get this glued down so that's the stage i'll do now right so what i've done i've quickly removed the cut out copper foil the tape off the board i'm literally just going to wipe off the adhesive now with some cleaning fluid pcb cleaning fluid just to get rid of the adhesive we want the glue to take straight from the tape to the board. So we'll just get the small amount of adhesive that comes on this tape off the board, off the uh, off the tape. So it should stick nicely now when the when the glue goes on. So what I'm going to do also with this, I'm going to turn turn this piece over in a minute. I'm just going to tin the other side with a small amount of solder. Basically, what you can either do this, you've got three different options with that part. 
You can tin it at this stage, you can tin it before you can cut the shape out, or you can tin it once it's bonded down to the board. But this is the stage I like to do it at. So what I do, get this turned over, and then we get the other side tinned up with a small amount of solder. Right, so once I clean the other side, I've turned this tape over, and now I'm just ready to apply a small amount of solder in this side. So to speed the solder flowing over the tape, you put a small amount of rework flux, and just going to add a small amount of unleaded solder. I think I've said previously, my iron's set to about 370 degrees Celsius. It's normally the temperature I use for unleaded soldering. So let's just get a small amount applied to the tape. Just hold it down with your tweezers. As you can see, it wipes over really easily. That's all I've had to do there. So that's now tinned up, ready to be applied to the board. What I'll do, I'll quickly get the flux removed from this side and then we get the tape stuck down to the board. I'm now going to apply the glue and I'm using Tack Pack for this. It's a PCB glue, but you've got the choice of using two part epoxies, you've got sort of heat resistant glues, there's plenty of different glues you can use. One thing I have done, I've made sure there's no exposed layers down below this one, so the, fi the fibres are still in place. Now, if you've got an exposed layer down below, you really need to seal that. You can seal that, say, with a heat resistant glue, make a sort of layer between the layer sort of down below and the tape that's going on. So make sure you can't see any layers below. So what we do, get the glue applied. You just want a small amount along there under the trace. So if any comes out of the sides, you can sort of wipe this glue away once it's set. You just push it into all four corners. Let's get the tape placed on there. So like I say, if you get any coming out of the sides, you can resolve that after once it's set. Let's get it into place. So I haven't put the activator on yet, so I've got a short while to place this in the correct position. The activator's what's gonna set your glue. So if I do that after I'm happy. Looking pretty good. It's all nicely pushed down. Just pop that bit back there. Make sure that corner's down. I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is just spray the activator and get that set. So I'll say tack pack comes in two parts, but there's plenty of different glues available. Alright, so that should now doesn't take long for this tack pack to set once the activator's been applied. So all we've got to do now is let that dry and uh, yeah, start getting ready for place the fuse holder. Right, so just move on to bonding down the fuse holder. What I've done here, just scraped back about a millimetre of existing trace coming from T1. That's the end of the copper foil there. So literally I'm just going to do a solder blob across M2. That's going to join basically the fuse holder down to T1. So I've, yeah, I've literally just scraped that back with scalpel, I've shown it in a few videos, just really careful, take the top surface off, just to expose the copper. So all you need now, a bit of rework flux, just get some added onto that where, you, where your told is going. So just a small amount over the, over the join, it's going to basically make your join easier to get to take. Again, I'm doing unleaded solder. All you need is a small amount on your iron and just feed that in and get them two bridged up. So it's just going and uh, yeah, get them joined up. As simple as that. So I've now got a continuous trace going right from where the fuse holder is down to T1. So that's that end done. So what we do, get the captain tub, just held that down with captain tape so the solder don't spread too far up. So what I do, I'll get this tape removed and we'll get the fuse holder body bonded down to these pads. Right, so as you can see so far, it's looking I've got the join now soldered up there, so the trace is continuous to that pad. So what I'm going to do now is get this fuse holder placed in position. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a small amount of glue between the pads. Just to give the body small amount of bonding down to the board, don't really want to get any on the pads that's the spot of tack pack in the middle there 
the activator will find its way underneath this body. So what I've got to do now is just place the body in position. Just get it central on the pads. So it won't the glue won't set without the activator. Just push this end slightly over. Right, that's pretty good. All right, so that's now straight, central to the pad. You don't get much room at these fuse holders for the solder joint. As you can see, there's not much pad sticking out the ends. So all I've got to do now is spray the activator underneath and uh, that glue should set. Just get a small amount of this sprayed underneath. Might just give that a short while. And that should have bonded that down. So. All we've got to do now is get the end soldered up and then I'm going to put a small amount of tack pack around the outside the fuse holder. So because on this example this pad's still solid to the board, it's going to be quite a strong fix anyway. Like so we've got all the pad and trace bonded down. So yeah, all I've got to do now is get the two ends soldered and uh, get the tack pack around the outside. Right, so the repair's nearing an end now. All we've got to do now is get these two fixing lugs off the fuse holder soldered down to their relevant points. You don't get a lot of room at the end of these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pre-flux both ends, tip my iron with a little bit of solder, and then uh, yeah, we'll get these soldered up. And after that, just got a bond around the outside. So we'll get the flux on first. So you don't wanna keep your iron on these too long because the glue can sort of melt and go a bit soft. It does reset, but you don't really want the iron on there for any longer than need be. So just get a small amount of the iron we get this quickly soldered up. We're looking forward to fill it along the bottom. So all you're looking for is that nice, as you can see it's riding up onto the lug both sides. And that's what you're looking for. Obviously that plastic in the middle there is sticking out, holding the lug on. So what I've got there is the perfect joint. So what I do is quickly get this turned around and do the other end. Like I say, try not to keep your iron in there too long when you do these. So again, I've already pre-fluxed that end. We're just going now, a small amount of solder on your iron tip. Like I said earlier, I've got lead free on this. So what you're looking for is that small fillet along the bottom. And again, you've got a nice amount just riding up onto the lug and along right along the front. So that's basically the uh, soldering done. So all you've got to do now, I'm going to get this cleaned up, just with my ultra, ultra sold clean fluid. I'm just going to get a small bead of tack pack along both sides. So I won't put any around the ends. So we've already got the blob underneath in the middle. So what I'll do, I'll get this cleaned up and then we'll get the, uh, the tack pack applied. Right, so now come on to the bonding up the sides of the holder. Just before that, I just want to show you this joint at the end. As you can see, I've got a lovely bead of solder right along the bottom. Same up the other end, so that's a perfect amount. Everything's perfectly in place. So what we're going to do is we hit this turn around so you can see the side view. What I'm going to do here, a small bead of glue up the side, and do that the other side as well. And that you won't need none around the ends, and that give you a yeah really solid fixed down holder. So what I'm going to do, I'll normally put the activator on first, uh, wait till it evaporates, then I'll apply the glue. But in this case, I'm just going to do it the opposite way round. But yeah, when I do wires with this tack pack, I'll always put the applicator on first, the activator, and then let that evaporate and put the glue on. But so with this, I put the glue on first. And I'm just going to use a small amount of solder just to apply the glue. So you're looking just, but yeah, just for a small fillet. I'm not going to go right the way along. Just put a couple of little beads along the side, and it should. Uh, you give it quite a bit of stability. Just put one more further along. And that's probably enough for that side. I'm going to do the same the other side. So turn the connector around. Hopefully you can get a view of this one. That's that side in view. So I'll just get this same on this side. Small bead up the side. That's all you're looking to do. That's going to give this 
holder some good strength going forward Just one more tiny bit that's it really so all you got to do now get your activator applied wait a few seconds and that should be set So that does evaporate, you see it evaporating in front of your eyes and that's going to give that F1 holder a really solid base. So as you can see the joint that end, just turn around so you see the joint the other end, try and get it in focus, so also on that end like I say you've got a lovely bead of solder going right along the bottom and that's that stage complete. So what I do is just sort of wipe some of this off with we clean the fluid then uh, we put the fuse in and test this out. Right so the final part of the repair now is just to test it all out. So I should be getting a signal from this wire around the back here coming from this pad. It's going through the fuse and that's going to that point in T1. So I should get a continuity buzz when I put the point on there, the probe point and the other probe point there. So let's quickly push that fuse down into the holder and then we get this, uh, get this buzzed out. Right, so the fuse is in the holder. Let's get the get the continuity uh, underway. I'm hoping should hear a nice loud beep. So there, that's the proof that it's all going to work. So signals going right through, right through the fuse down the wire the other side, and uh, so it's perfect. So everything's come really well, as you can see from what we started with. It's come out really well. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. So this. Uh, I know a lot of people probably say why don't you just solder it from that pad straight to there because you probably could with this, you probably swing it around. But if you've got a really long trace, for instance, this one was all ripped, you could actually do the same. Or well, this is this method's really good if you've got quite a large area where say contamination's taking place, you can just sort of cut that part out and uh, completely match the area with, with the copper tape. So it's a great method. Hopefully you've like I say you've enjoyed it and uh Hope you've learned something. So anyway, what I'll do, I'll wrap this video up now, put a few more photos up, and uh, I'll see you again soon with another video. So thanks for your time, thanks for your support, and uh, yeah, take care, I'll see you soon.